self-compassion falls in the as a kind of continuation of this holding space that we developed in the last module. But it has these three features. The first one is presence, then acceptance, and then humanity. Presence, acceptance, humanity. Each of them are important because they counter how trauma unfolds. The fir first thing, presence, is the exact opposite of dissociation. Does that make sense? Okay, so we are creating, if you like the word attunement, that would fit in this category right now, okay? And, w and, where, and, and where are we making the presence felt? It is in the body. And, and with what? It is with uh, negative emotions, painful emotions. So presence. Second one is acceptance. So as we learn from the second foundation, once you make contact with unpleasant feelings, what's the typical reaction? Aversion. Aversion, right? There's a knee-jerk response to push it away. And if you're in the game and the in, you're, you're interested in processing the pain of the past, because in a way the pain of the past without being processed is now in control of you, do you follow? If, if you don't process the pain of the past, it controls you. Do you follow? Yes. So that, that's why it'd be like, why, why are we doing this idiotic thing? And what does it have to do anything with Buddhism? I signed up with, for a <laughs> goddamn Buddhist class, and here I am doing trauma. Why are we doing trauma? I don't I have no interest in doing trauma. The reason that we're doing trauma is after 20-some years of working in this way, the people that have the biggest spiritual inclination are the ones that are running away from the deepest wounds of their life. And if we're, you know, so we'll get into spiritual bypassing, but <clears throat> if your hope and your aspiration is to have an impact on your mind, to cultivate your mind, you will have to take care of the pains and wounds in your life. Otherwise, they will control you from the unconscious. They will control you from the body. They will control you from implicit memory. There's so many ways. They will, they will control you as the release of karma because it's already been planted. So the best that you could hope for is to be like, I'm going to take care of this. That's the most heroic thing that you can do. You can't run and you can't hide. And just look at the evidence in your life. Like how many times is it, how, how tiring is it to hit a landmine all the time? To take one step forward and two steps back and one step forward and two steps back. It's like your body is telling you, I'm here. That's what trauma triggers. You heard this word trigger? That's what a trigger is. It's, it's your past saying, don't forget about me. I'm here. I won't ask you, don't raise your hand, but on a daily basis, are you being triggered by something? And if, if it's not you, you're probably connected with somebody who is. So rather than saying, well, this is a problem, you say, there's something here to learn. There's something inside of me that's alert, trying to get my attention. So instead of having the narrative of why me, you go, Yes, me. It's my time. This is my time. It's the right time to take care of this so that I can have the rest of my life to actually fulfill my mission. This is my mission. This is my mission. Especially from a transgenerational uh, standpoint, this is going to go down the line and through you to others unless you, the buck stops here. So what, a, what an amazing bodhisattva resolve to take care of it in your lifetime and break the chain, break the cycle. Presence, acceptance. It's going to feel uncomfortable. But your ability to deal with that discomfort will increase. 
and the charge that has dominion over you, control over you, will lose its effect. It's only because you've been running and your capacity to deal with it has been diminished that it has this tra tragic uh, consequence on you, on us. I'm in this with you guys. Well, the one thing I like about this is that there's no guru here. Wounded, together we're going to do this. Acceptance is the ability to tolerate for small incremental top periods consciously some of the distress in order to increase the tolerance over the long haul, but in the meantime, let this like energetic charge allow it to be processed. You need that skill. No way around it. Final one is humanity. This is the wisdom aspect which is on the basis of trauma there's a tremendous amount of shame it's almost like horse and carriage they come together there's the pain and then there's the shame they come together like horse and carriage and in some cases the shame is even worse than the pain do you know what I'm talking about yes. sometimes the, the shame is even worse than the pain the shame is telling us that we're incapable, inadequate, we, it's our fault. There's something wrong with us. And it wants to hide. It wants to run and hide. So in order to dispel that, there has to be this sense of humanity. But like, this is the human condition. There's no shame in this. The things that happened to us weren't our fault. We had no resources to deal with it. We did exactly what we could do the best we could to our ability at the time that they happened. And, 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 and we spent our, time, our lives keeping ourselves, holding ourselves to some unrealistic standard, blaming ourselves. And now we're going to put a different spin on it. This is part of the human condition. This isn't our mess to clean up. This is our, this is our responsibility to, to transform. And if we can do that, then you'll see in year two how that becomes the seed of bodhicitta for others. It will inform if you can have some sense of your own humanity. Right? Because perfectionism is intimately tied to insecurity. That we have unreasonable standards and we hold ourselves to an incredibly high impossible regard because actually underneath it we feel so imperfect, so insecure. So the idea is lower the standard and have some humanity that gives you a wider berth to be a human being with all your frailties and your disposition and your inclinations and your mess ups and your wounds and your warts and all your secrets and all the rest of it. And then if you have that, if we can develop that, then it will transform our opinion and our reactions to other people. Because it mostly it's a projection. Mostly it's an overlay of our inability to deal with our own suffering that we impose that on other people and call them clingy and needy and crazy and all the rest of it. And then want to, you know, sue them. So the self-compassion is, uh, it is a meditative process. It involves touch, but it involves these three stages where you're making contact. You're creating the... Uh, acceptance or tolerance and then you have this wisdom aspect where you start to see like I'm just a human being or I, there's a forgiveness beautiful word so we'll get into the forgiveness